Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel, Accounts Guru Cool. Learn accounting online. So today we are here with one more video in which we are going to discuss about the types of financial reports every FA team should be using. So this video we have created based on the request of one of our viewers to know that uh, how many reports are there into finance planning and analysis and uh, uh, what's the mean by that. So that's all we are going to discuss here to know uh, what are all the types of reports are there in the FE&A and we have to work for that and we have to submit that report to the management. So we are going to discuss that. So request viewers to watch the video till the end. And if you want to go, if you're looking for any sort of training related to accounting and finance or any other, it's a technical training or related to any software training, or if you're looking for any sort of consultancy related to accounting and finance. So you can connect with us on our email ID accounts.gurukul at the rate yahoo.com. So request viewers to watch the video till the end, like the video, share the video and subscribe our channel to get the more practical knowledge related to accounting and finance. So six type of fa &E report, reporting types. So there are six types of reporting types are there related to the finance planning and analysis. And uh, the first is related to budget versus actual reports. So uh, we know the finance planning and analysis is going to be how the uh, planning and analysis and related to that this budgeted versus actual uh, actual reports is how much is important for the management to know how much we have the budgeted versus how much we have the actual spend and what's the uh, commentary for that so budgeted versus actual warrants analysis and this is one of the important reporting factors related to the FNA team and they need to do this so the every department in a business is responsible for a budget throughout the month department managers need help from the fna team to understand how budget actuals are tracking against their budget targets so each and every department they need to submit the budget and uh, they have the budget in place and they, they are responsible to uh, do the expenses as per the budget and not beyond that and to know uh, somebody need to help to the respective uh, respective managers to know that how much is the budgeted numbers versus actuals and uh, uh, someone need to track against their budgeted targets to know either we are uh, on track or we are out of the track it is an incumbent upon fna to monitor departmental actuals against budgets Capture commentary from department managers to explain any variances and communicate the status to the executives. All while tracking to the broader goals of the operating plan or budget throughout the year. Plan and budget throughout the year. In continuation to that, by sending out monthly department budget versus actual reports, also known as actual warrants analysis or budget warrants analysis. FNA team can collaborate with department managers to quickly identify and address large warrants. So from the FNA standpoint, this is one of the very important report of budget versus actual warrants and uh, they need to connect with the respective department to know what's the reasons for that and they have to submit the commentary to the executives to know that these are all the reasons for the warrants analysis. Depending on the findings, variances can be favorable or unfavorable. Either the variances is going to be favorable or unfavorable. A favorable variance could include higher income than anticipated or sales exceeding targets. So what's mean by favorable variance? So favorable variance could include higher income than anticipated. So if your income is uh, more as compared to your budgeted one, and whatever you have anticipated about the income and that income is exceed on that, then that's going to be considered as a favorable budget. Or if your sales exceeding targets, so if you assume that the sales is going to be around 1 million and the sales is 1.2 million, so that's going to be considered as a favorable variance. And, and favorable variance is opposite to the variables 
on the other hand can happen when sales numbers plunk below projections or they are higher than expected expenses so the unfavorable variance is going to be as opposed to the favorable variance favorable variance is going to be held for the business it's a positive numbers but the unfavorable variance is going to be as a negative numbers and uh, what you have projected the numbers the actual numbers is not as per your projections it's a below the projection so the unfavorable variance are going to be there now comparing budget against actual results allow you to investigate the reason behind large variances and if the variances are negative proactively take steps to fix the situations so why this budget versus actuals is going to be helpful for the any business is that to know what we have the budgeted and what against that we have the actual numbers and when we do the budget versus actual variance analysis then we are able to know that what's lacking behind that and what what went wrong and we have to do the uh, proactively to work on that to have the steps to fix the situations to avoid it into the future so that's reason this budget versus actual is going to be a uh, help for any sort of business for example fni can work with the business to uncover if unfavorable variances are being caused by change in market conditions competitors actions an unexpected event or an unrealistic forecast so for example the fni can work with the business to uncover if favorable variances are being caused by changes in market conditions so finance planning and analysis team is going to be work with the business to uh, have the uh, unfavorable variances if it's because of the market conditions competitors actions or an unexpected event or unrealistic forecast then these guys are going to be work with the respective team to uh, mitigate the loss and mitigate the uh, unfavorable variance to change it into the uh, favorable variance and they are going to help for the business they are going to do the study further for that and make a strategy on that generating budget versus actual reports also gives the fni team access to all the informations they need to determine and report the state of the business to the chief financial officers and other executives so that's going to help for the cfo as well so that's the first report is related to the budget versus actuals and the second is going to be talk about cash flow forecasting reports the cash flow forecast predict the future financial liquidity and cash collections of a business over a specific period of time a uh, short term cash flow forecasting is based on actual cash receipts and disbursement data typically focus on 12 months or less that's going to be cash flow forecasting report while long term cash flow forecast are projections based on data from the income statement and balance sheets and look beyond 12 month so the cash flow forecasting is going to be typically focus on the 12 months or less than that or in case if you want to go for the long term cash flow then the long term cash flow forecast are projections based on the data the income statement and uh, how to pull out certain numbers from the balance sheet and look beyond the 12 months so that's going to be considered as a long term cash flow in continuation to uh, continuation to that cash flow forecasting reports ideally you should send out a weekly short term cash flow analysis reports to every business functions that has the ability to try cash collections these types of financial reports track period to period activity against cash collection goals to anticipate where the final results will land for the period consequently the fna team can collaborate with business managers to quickly spot issues and opportunities to improve the cash positions and collection matrix they can then take those recommendations to the executive team and advise them on real actions the business can take today to improve the cash positions of the company an activity that provides high impact financial value of the organizations so when we have the idle the cash flow is in place then it's able to send it to the respective teams who are managing the cash collections and this that's going to be give the more update about that how we are as per the our cash flow forecasting reports versus actuals and that's going to be help for us to uh, 
ensure that we have we have the cash as per the our forecast and the third report is related to fna is that operational review reports so here an operational review reports is a comprehensive review of the entire organizations for a specific department so the operational review is going to be do it for the particular department to do the in-depth review for that particular department it can be used to evaluate the organization's performance to find ways for more efficient resource allocations and target certain initiatives to be scheduled or completed within a specific time frame it also gives fna the ability to spot problems quickly and take corrective actions so if any is if any particular departments we have to do the review then this fna team is going to do the operational review of that particular department to know the uh, loopholes and uh, to work on the more efficient resource allocations and uh, target certain initiative to be scheduled or completed within a specific time frame it also gives the fna the ability to spot problems quickly and take correction actions corrective actions if any particular departments are not performing as per the expectations then we have to do the operational review for that entire department to know either we are using the more efficient all the resources or whatever we have the allocations and target or and if it's not then fna team is going to help for them to find out the solutions and to identify the corrective actions on that in continuation to that operational review and reports fna managers should provide operational review reports to line of business managers that's the lop these reports enable them to model and ad hoc analysis them to model ad hoc analysis conduct scenario analysis analyze different outcomes choose the best course of actions and then track the progress of the project to see how the actuals compare to the original targets so operational review reports they, we have to uh, prepare some reports and send it to the respective line of business managers that's the lob managers to uh, have the more uh, analysis on that and these guys are uh, whatever we have done the scenario analysis analyze different outcomes choose the best course of actions and the track the progress of the project to see how the actuals compare to the original target so that's going to help for the respective uh, lob managers in continuation that operational review reports and related financial forecasting models help business leaders evaluate and plan for different scenarios and conduct what if analysis to make educated business decisions based on a variety of potential options these decisions can include investing investing in a view in a new market or launching a new product line hiring more staff or evaluating a merger or acquisitions that's depend upon the uh, reports and uh, how it's going to be held for the management or the respective line of business managers that's the operational review reports and the fourth is going to be balance sheet a balance sheet provides a snapshot of an organization's financial health at a particular point in time uh, which makes it one of the most important financial statements balance sheet help business determines their true net worth because they lay out the assets what a business owns liabilities what a business owes and shareholders equity owners equity the difference between the two that's a balance sheet a balance sheets by listing the comparing your assets and liabilities on a balance sheet you can determine if the business can cover its short term obligations if your liabilities exceed your cash balance then your business may require additional funding and or liquidity from external source so that's going to be held from the balance sheets in continuation to that a balance sheet also reveals the company's debt level too much debt indicates a risk of a defaulting on debt payments or filing for bankruptcy by identifying these issues you can help management avoid long term financial problems in addition the balance sheet gives potential investors and lenders a good idea of the company's financial positions so they can better understand their investments will go and what they can expect to receive in the futures so that's going to be held from the balance sheet reporting next is income statement uh, the income statement also known as the profit and loss or p and l statement shows your company's income 
and expenses as well as the profits or losses during a specified period. It gives uh, you a clear picture of your company's profitability. One is balance sheet, second one is related to income statement. Internally, internally management and the board of directors analyze information from this financial statement to make key decisions about the company's standing and operations. For example, they can make pricing decisions, decide whether or not to increase or scale down productions, push sales or target a new audience. Externally, in investors use the income statement to decide whether or not to invest in a company based on its growth potentials and ability to generate a profit. Creditors also use the income statement to see if a business is able to pay off its loan or take out a new one. That's going to be how based on the income statement. And the last is going to be cash flow statement. The cash flow statement outlines how much cash is generated from sales, investment, dividends and spent to a loan, repayment, payroll, payroll bills, etc. By a business over a certain period of time, it is based on the operating, investing and financing activities of a company and the numbers are pulled from the income statement and balance sheet. The cash flow statement outlines how much cash is generated from sales, investment and dividend and spent to loan repayments, payroll bills, etc. By a business over a certain period of time, it is based on the operating, investing and finding financing activities of a company and the numbers are pulled from the income statement and balance sheet. That's a cash flow statement. So that's the six FA reporting types are there. Accurate FA reporting is fundamental for strategic financial planning and decision making, and uh, creating the infrastructures for more meaningful, accurate financials and management reporting and data analysis enables FA and business to improve the management of the company's resources, make decisions faster, and optimize future financial results. And that's the reasons this FA is essential to know what sort of reporting types are there and how it's going to be important from the business standpoint. So that's all from this video. And uh, thanks guys for watching the video till the end. And uh, this is, and we know that now six FPA reporting types is uh, related to the finance planning and analysis. One is budgetary versus actual cash flow forecasting reports, uh, operational review reports, balance sheet, income statement and cash flow statement. So once again, thanks guys for watching the video till the end and request the viewers to like the video, share the video and subscribe our channel to get the more practical knowledge related to accounting and finance. In addition to that, if you want to go for any sort of training related to accounting and finance, either it's a technical training, software training, or if you're looking for any sort of consultancy related to accounting and finance, so you can connect with us on our email ID, accounts.gurukul at the rate yahoo.com. Thank you.